AI is taking over the world. It's only a matter of time till a robot has taken my job, is seeing my patients, and I'm just there sipping cocktails on a beach somewhere. Wait, does that mean I won't get paid? And there's a huge rise of AI chatbots like ChatGPT. For those of you that don't know what ChatGPT is, it is an artificial intelligence software. It's kind of like having a really, really intelligent friend that's working 24 hours a day and that doesn't mind if you give it all of your work. Kind of sounds a bit like a med student, doesn't it? It's like this website where you can write pretty much anything and it will give you great information. For example, I've asked it for ideas for podcast titles, to write letters for me, to improve my own CV. I've used it for literally anything you could possibly use it for. I've been trying it out. It's also conversational, so when it sends you something, you can reply to that and say, no, change it in this way. I would like you to make that French or make it longer or make it rhyme and it will do your bidding like a little AI joker that it is. The possibilities are truly endless and during my work as a doctor there are a ton of applications where we could be using this technology. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the ways that doctors can be using artificial intelligence. Let's get into it. The first one is writing clinic letters. I spent half of my life as a doctor writing things so if I could streamline that process it would make a huge difference. After you've seen someone you need to write that encounter down so everyone else knows what's happening. Clinic letters have a very specific format often and so if I could get an AI to use the information that I've given it, put it into the format of a letter, that could actually be really helpful. So I tested this by telling ChatGPT, write me a clinic letter in this format, diagnosis, medications, plan, today, and then gave it this information about how old this patient was. The patient is called Paul Rudd. Can I have one of these? No. Can I just have one? No. He had a myocardial infarction after using cocaine. He's on these medications. Today he's well and in clinic we're planning outpatient echo and reviewing cardiology clinic in six months time. The word echo is just set off my Alexa. He's a non-smoker and he's an actor. We had a bit of a back and forth about this. I'm not gonna go into this in so much detail. I'll probably make a whole video about this encounter in particular, but I just made a couple of tweaks to what they said and it ended up with something that I was actually really happy with and that I would be happy using as a clinic letter. Here's the final result. Dear Dr. Rowan Francis, I'm writing to provide you with an update on the health status of Paul Rudd, blah, 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 blah. Diagnosis, myocardial infarction, secondary to cocaine use, medications, and then it's listed the medications there, which it put in itself. Plan, outpatient echo, reviewing cardiology clinic in six months time, continue current medications. Now these last two it put in itself, advice to maintain a healthy lifestyle, advice to avoid cocaine use. I mean, this is good advice actually. And then it's got a little of summary of what we found today in clinic. Please don't hesitate to contact me. Sincerely, Dr. Kiran Majaria king of all doctors. So I would say it's successfully written a clinic letter. Next up is prescribing. Now prescribing is such an important part of being a doctor and something you cannot get wrong otherwise it can have dire consequences. 29 people were unalived by prescribing errors in 2021 in the UK so it's really serious. Could AI be helpful in double checking your prescribing? And what I was thinking about specifically is prescribing in children because adult prescriptions are normally very easy. I prescribe antibiotics every single day and normally they're the same kinds of antibiotics at the same doses because all adults get pretty much the same thing. With children though, it's much more complicated because you need to know their weight, you need to know their age, and depending on their weight, they might need a different amount of antibiotics. So the number of milligrams per kilogram of weight, once you know the number of milligrams, you then need to know the strength of the medication because it might be 10 milligrams per mil. So how many mils of that medication do you need? And then you need to divide it by how many doses you need of it. So you can see where the room for error is there. Now I wanted to test artificial intelligence to see if it could prescribe for a child. So I said, what is the correct dose of amoxicillin for a five-year-old child they weigh 21 kilograms and like to pre prescribe a five-day course please use the bnf it gave me this bit about please don't use ai instead of your doctor but it did use the bnf and it said that it recommends 20 to 40 milligrams per kilogram per day up to a maximum of one gram per day and then did a calculation for me so as of a five-year-old at 21 kilograms you should be able to have between 420 and 840 milligrams per day 
divided in doses. Now, this is quite a big range, but it has given me the correct information. And then I said, that's a big range. What would the normal dose be? And it basically gave me the same information again. I said, what's the normal strength of amoxicillin liquid? And it told me the strengths. And I said, so would a five milliliter, three times a day dose be an okay dose for this patient? And it essentially has said yes. So it's calculated that in that five mil dose, there's 750 milligrams, which falls within the range that it has given. So this would be a great way of double checking a prescription. I mean, did this take longer than me just doing a calculation? Probably, but if you wanted to be uber sure, I could see this being helpful. Next up, can AI write letters to specialists? So for example, I've seen a patient in my clinic, half of my day, I'm actually referring people to cardiology or to respiratory or to the renal team. I wanted to see if I gave it the information, could it write a referral? referral letter for me. Now let's try with some fake information. So I've given it this information for a patient. I said this is a 62 year old patient with worsening breathlessness, normal chest x-ray, normal bloods, but pulmonary function tests, I didn't know if it was going to get the acronym, I was trying to trick it, showing a restrictive picture. Previous asbestos exposure, working as a shipyard worker, no pets, this is their exercise tolerance. None of these sympt other symptoms, please refer and include my name, Dr. Kiran Majaria, and title, King of All Doctors. And then it wrote this letter for me, which I was generally happy with. I'm writing to refer my patient, a 62 year old individual, because I forgot to write the sex, who's been experiencing worsening breathlessness, a chronic cough over the last year, and has a restrictive picture on the PFTs. It says, despite using inhalers and PPIs, the patient condition has not improved. So. There, I was specifically referring to the cough, but it has talked about breathlessness in general. So I wasn't quite happy with that bit. The patient's chest X-ray and blood tests were normal. There were none of these other symptoms, but experiences night sweats. Now, bear in mind, I said, no fevers, weight loss, night sweats. It's clearly not interpreted that properly and it's taken no fevers, no weight loss, but night sweats. So I ended up correcting it and then I got a letter that I was pretty happy with. That is a letter that I would be comfortable actually sending to a specialist. That's probably as good as a referral letter that I normally send. But that being said, I did put most of the information that I wanted including in the letter into the AI. Next up, this is a biggie, a diagnosis. Can AI diagnose better than a doctor? And yes, I know what you're saying, use your clinical judgment, you shouldn't use AI for this, blah, blah, blah. I just want to test it. I want to know if it is as good or if it's thinking the same things that I'm thinking when I put in a bunch of symptoms. I have a patient with multiple random symptoms. Can you help me work out what's going on? Bruises on the lower legs, fatigue, chronic cough, and reduced renal function. Can you give me five differential diagnoses, starting with the most likely? And it's gone straight in there with chronic kidney disease. And the thing I like about it, it's given it a rationale for it. It's not just said, these are five things. It says, here are things, and here's why I'm thinking these things. Chronic kidney disease, because of reduced renal function, fatigue, skin bruising, bruising coughing, vasculitis, so vasculitis and sarcoidosis were the two things that I was originally thinking about. Vasculitis can cause bruising on legs, fatigue, coughing. It can also cause fevers, joint pains, weight loss, leukemia, another good one, lupus, another good one, COPD. It didn't include sarcoidosis. I wonder if that's because I put what is the most likely and that's a slightly rarer thing. Maybe. But I said to it, why not sarcoidosis? And then it said, it is a possible differential diagnosis that can be considered. It's And it told me a bit about what it is and what symptoms it causes. But then it said, sarcoidosis may not be the most likely diagnosis based on the information provided as other differential diagnoses may present with similar symptoms. And then it told me how you diagnose sarcoidosis. So I think this is good for getting an idea of what you think might be happening, but it's certainly not a replacement for actually seeing someone in person just yet, but I could see this being really helpful if you've got lots of unexplained symptoms to come up with different potential differential diagnoses that you can then be testing for. So if you are completely stumped as to what is going on, normally we do lots of tests to help target those tests this could be quite useful. Next up, how about sending things to actual patients themselves? I send a lot of information to patients. The reception staff send a lot of information to patients as well who maybe don't have as much medical knowledge. So I wonder if there's a way that we can use AI, chat AI, to send patients simple explanations for things. Let's try it out. So I said, please write a letter to my patient, Jonah Hill. Jonah is so comfortable with me. 
He's been calling me a goat all week. Informing him that his cholesterol is high, tell him the importance of managing high cholesterol, his Q risk is low so he doesn't need a statin, but please explain this to him. Explain techniques of lowering cholesterol, that will repeat this test in a year, and that he will need to contact the reception to book in for a blood pressure. And it said, Dear Jonah Hill, I hope this letter founds you well. I'm writing to inform you of the results of your recent cholesterol tests, which indicate your cholesterol levels are high. Well, this may be concerning news, it's important to take action in managing your cholesterol levels to reduce your risk of heart disease and stroke. Now, that is something I would say, and that is really good. I'm pleased to inform you that your Q-risk is low, which means that you do not require statin medication to your manage your cholesterol. Now, who understands what that actually means? Medical professionals do, patients don't, that needs more explaining. It's essential to take steps to reduce your cholesterol levels. These include healthy diet, healthy weight, physical activity, quitting smoking. I recommend to make these changes. I'd like to schedule a blood pressure check. Please contact reception. Please contact me or your office. Kind regards. And obviously, I got it to explain what Q-Risk was in the next one and include my title again, Dr. Kira Majaria, the king of all doctors. So again, I think it's done a pretty good job of this. And then finally, I want to see if it could summarize a medical record. Some medical records are incredibly long. I'm talking pages and pages and pages. And if there was a succinct way of looking at it and getting a really accurate summary, I think that could be really useful. So I want to see if it could do it, but I'm going to try and trick it again. Let me show you how. So I said, create a summarized problem list for this patient, including the name of the condition. Only include important problems. Now this is where I'm trying to trick it. If it's not relevant or important, then do not include it. So how is it gonna know what is important or relevant? Let's find out. Myocardial infarction, non-smoker, vegetarian diet, celiac disease, type two diabetes, and then I gave a date. Type two diabetes resolved, and I gave a later date. So it shouldn't include that, because that is a problem that has resolved. Fracture of the radius, BMI, which is normal, so it shouldn't include that either. Enjoys broccoli, cesarean section. So I'm expecting it to not include non-smoker, vegetarian diet, BMI, which is normal, diabetes, which is resolved. So maybe it'll include that, maybe it won't, and enjoys broccoli. Cesarean section at birth is probably not relevant, but let's see what it does. It's included these five things, myocardial infarction, celiac disease, type two diabetes, fracture of the radius and cesarean section. And then it's given me a little bit about how this patient is high risk of cardiovascular disease because of previous MIs and diabetes. So I wanted to challenge this. I said to, does the patient still have type two diabetes? It says the information provided indicates that the patient had type two diabetes in 1999, which was resolved by 2003. But there's no further information regarding whether the patient still has diabetes. It's impossible to determine it. So I said, but what does the latest information say about this patient's diabetes? Do they have it or has it resolved? It said, I apologize, but the information provided does not provide any further information about the current status of type two diabetes. It's impossible to determine. I said, if it resolved in 2003, does that not assume that they do not have it anymore? And it said, yes, if the patient's type two diabetes resolved in 2003, it suggests that the patient may not have the condition anymore. But it's important to note that type two diabetes can sometimes reoccur. It's trying to backtrack here and say, yeah, you, you know what, you're actually right. Right. this patient probably doesn't have it anymore, but we can't be 100% sure, which is why I've included it. So I said, why is it on the original problem list if it has resolved? And then it's apologized. It said, yep, you're correct. I apologize for the confusion. If the patient's type two diabetes resolved in 2003, it should not be included on the current problem list as it's no longer an ongoing issue for the patient. Therefore, the problem list for the patient would be, and it listed it again, but remove the diabetes. And then it said, I apologize for any confusion. I hope it clarifies it. And I said, I accept your apology. I think this has been a fascinating video. A ton of ways that medics can be using AI to improve the way that we give patient care, to streamline our processes, and just generally, you know, to try something that's new. This was a fun video to make. If there's any ways that you think that I've not thought about, please let me know. Maybe the next video will be replaced by an AI. I mean, that would be a dream if they could make my YouTube videos for me and I can just sip there on the beach with my cocktails. Take care guys, I'm uploading videos now way more frequently. If you are new, please subscribe a ton of content similar to this and I will see you in the next one.